everybody. Thanks for waiting, and welcome to the Elseworlds Exchange. I am Sal. And I'm Jewel. Today we're going to talk about some of the uh, top new Batman villains in the comic mm-hmm. books. And when we say new, what do we mean by that? <laughs> because L- Like what 2006 is onward. Yeah, and, uh, and it's funny because I can imagine a lot of folk being like, that ain't new. I got into comics in 2012. I got mm. into comics in 2020. Yeah. yeah oh, how I'm is that sure. new? And it's like, for a long... I mean, to be fair, we should... Maybe we should revisit this where it's like new villains that had been created like since the original classics. Yeah, probably. You know, that like... You know, like Anarchy or yeah, the KG Beast. Like characters that were invented that were meant to be the next big thing. And like... Worried. That's the topic right there. Next big things that weren't. Yeah. I mean, does Bane count? I don't know. I mean, definitely the biggest 90s edition, but I think Bane is, you know, just through time and cultural osmosis, is considered one of the top ones. Now, I think if you're in the cartoons and the movies and the video games, and if I can buy your shirt at Hot Topic, you're not really new anymore. No, two movies. Yeah. Bane it. Not headlines. Well, this, one of them he does, but like two movies, not including the Lego Batman movie. Yes, you know Bane is everywhere. He's a sub character in the Harley Quinn cartoon. Like, yeah. But in any case, we are going to talk about these characters that uh, from the Morrison era up to the the Tynan, and I guess Williamson era because Williamson also creates a villain. That's right. Yeah, yeah. For Abyss. I forgot all about Abyss. Abyss. Yeah. And as I understand it, Zadarsky is also introducing a new villain in his run as well. Oh, you know, what? if we count Abyss, we also got to count Angel Breaker because I guess she's part of Shadow War and that's the big new assassin. Yes. Forgot about that. Damn. So uh, there have been a lot, you know. And it's funny, I think there's there's a there's a counterpart for this for Spider-Man as well. Oh, one hundred percent. I mean, Brand New Day is responsible for like a litany so of characters many. that you that, that no one cares about. And S- Mr. Negative. And Mr. Negative. <laughs> and again, if people didn't care about Mr. Negative overnight, people cared about Mr. Negative because he got to be in cartoons and movies eventually, and that's what helps get you to that next level. But people yeah. gotta care about you enough to put you in something. That's the thing, right? No, Mr. Negative was nothing until the video game. That was when they put him on the map. And and then suddenly everyone thought he was cool and everyone was into him because it was a good boss fight. And I knew that was going to happen too. And I'm like, you know what? Good for Mr. Negative. Exactly. Like I, I have no, I'm not a big fan of like mobster villains for Spider-Man anyway. So it's like, you know, people go, God, when am I going to get a great tombstone story? I'm like, whenever you want, I, I, (laughs) I won't be reading it. I don't care. Like, not that I have a problem with tombstone, but like, I remember the tombstone stories from like spectacular Spider-Man in the Mm nineties. And I'm like, these are all like, they're all dramas about Robbie. And it's like, yep. Is it really about organized crime? And even if it is, I'm reading a comic book here. Man, I don't necessarily want to read about organized crime. There's a reason why Batman's like villains pass the baton from organized crime Man. to super crime. But yeah, so let's jump into it. Uh, some so starting in the uh, during that time, we got a couple of like classic villains that show up almost immediately, and I think that's owed entirely to Grant Morrison. Mm -hmm. Um, but before we do i want to mention this show is sponsored by viewers like you i'm sure there are folk out there who have their own opinions and would like to share them and you can do so by sponsoring today's show by using super chats and asking a question or comment right we'll read it here on the show and it'll be part of it forever um so keep that in mind as we go uh of course don't forget to also subscribe to this channel and give us a like it helps us out and uh, visit joel at youtube.com slash cape joel for more thank you all right let's jump into it so uh where, where do you want to start all right, so I guess, you know, like I said, I went all the way back to 2006, 2006. <laughs> to, to the Morrison era, which, you know, say what you want about the Morrison era of Batman, but they definitely tried hard to be like, you know what, I'm inventing new stuff. I'm not going to rely on all the old things. It's a new day for Batman. I'm a creative individual. Let's create some new stuff. And one of the first villains that Morrison gave us was actually Professor Pig. Professor Pig. Hard to believe that Professor Pig is a relatively new villain, Uh. despite the fact that I got to say, like as much as I hear about Professor Pig, anytime anybody ever like suggests a villain for the movies Mm -hmm. or asks what an underutilized villain is, but outside of that never comes up. And I think it's It's just because he's not a terribly popular villain. No, no, not at all. And it's funny, too, as I looked back at this, Professor Pig didn't debut on his own. Professor Pig actually debuted as part of the Circus of Strange. So right. Professor Pig was part of an even bigger collective, 
yet Pig would end up completely eclipsing that collective. And again, I talked about, you know, when you're in movies, when you're in games, uh, you know, that, you know, helps you get to that next level. Yeah. Pig was actually in that totally forgotten CGI Beware the Batman cartoon, him yes. and Mr. Toad. Yeah, big. W- and that was, you could tell, like, that was a mandate for them. It was similar to the to the RIP era where we're like, introduce new villains like don't rely on the old classics like that was something there there were no old classics in beware the batman they were only new here's the problem with it though they made the new villains just inhabit the roles of old villains so professor pig in that show was not comic professor pig he was animal themed poison ivy (laughs) he was guy who cares very much about animal rights which is not the deal in the comics in fact i i hazard many people don't even know what professor pig's deal is because it kept changing obviously when morrison debuted him very big you know abstract idea involving like mk ultra experiments and maybe he was a spy and we're like planting the seeds for leviathan and everything and he makes these creepy daltrons and runs a drug cartel none of that stayed no no none of that (laughs) kind of kind of higher level thinking for a show that i think was geared towards children i don't Absolutely. know i feel like beware the batman was like an attempt to be like a kid's cartoon because it was it was to sell toys 100 percent. sell toys that's right and you, it's it's tough to sell a professor pig toy <laughs> sure is now if ever you read professor pig in the comic he's like a texas chainsaw pastiche is all he is which i mean like that i think that is people's immediate reaction to professor pig when they Just see him. him i remember seeing him and being like Normally, normally, I think uh, that some of these characters are kind of tryhards where it's like you're, you're really pushing it with uh, with this character. But at the same time, Professor Pig, there's something about him. It, there is. It it's a good drawing. There's something weirdly like Dick Tracy about him. Again, I will give Morrison all the credit in the world when it came to developing these villains. Yeah. Again, didn't do the try hard thing. It's like, oh, he's got guns and knives and he's super cool and we can right. spin him off. Professor Pig sounds like someone who could be fighting Dick Tracy totally. back in the day. Totally. It's just, but the look, the design is is similarly Texas Chainsaw slash um, horror themed. I mean, like you can imagine he, it, it's very House of a Thousand Corpses. Absolutely. Like if yeah. you want to go super dark, uh, you could you could do no wrong by picking professor pig despite the fact that he doesn't really fit that 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 yeah. uh that that mold um i'd say he ranks i say not only does he rank he fits yeah. like he's in there like he, he's made it you, he's absolutely made it right when you do a uh when, when you do a like montage of all the villains like professor pig is a great silhouette to throw in there he, he definitely made it over the hump, which is interesting that, you know, he managed to do it one way or another, either be it because of the look, be right. it because of, you know, just the general creep factor. I think we can say that Professor Pig ranks. Professor Pig made it. Yeah. And I think I, I honestly do genuinely believe it's because of the look. I think mm. the look says so much about, like, the character. I think that, like, because immediately... And especially in the later years, like in the more recent times, mm. design is everything. Absolutely. And people's initial reaction to it is is a make or break it kind of situation. That's a good silhouette is the thing. Exactly. In exactly. shadows, I would know who he was. Yeah. It's why the next character, I think, doesn't work because it goes too uh, gentleman ghost, a little too silly. I think you know what I'm talking about. The, like, the, uh, the pink flamingo pink flamingo see i i kind of unironically love pink flamingo because he is so loud and is so garish and is so over the top i will admit maybe a little try hard because it's like well what are his powers pink flamingo nothing he just, <laughs> he, he just dresses flamboyantly he's a cartel assassin yep. that they really built up the time and he eats people's faces Oh, 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 and also, is that a thing flamingos do? No, they eat krill. <laughs> right. Then then that's a waste. For me, not only is it He's a fail. He's not living his gimmick. <laughs> it, it, yeah, that's a fail. That's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a good try, but doesn't quite work. And yet think. still comes back every so often. I think people who are big Morrison fans, when it's like, ah, oh, we need a ton of assassins for the background. Um, um, oh, no one's used pink flamingo in a minute. That's true. And I, you know what I think the reason for that is? It's the same reason why... Um, white rabbit mm. is continually pushed in uh in in bat er, in spider-man comics and it's because you need a bunch of characters you gotta throw somebody out there you gotta throw somebody in there like and, and i'm sick of showing the same six characters 
pretty much. Like, I don't understand. Like, this is just a very side tangent, but I, I don't get the White Rabbit insistence. Like, every once in a while, more often than not, like, there was a good 25-year stretch where I never saw White Rabbit. And then suddenly, Everywhere. anytime that there's, like, a, a, a group shot or a, 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 a like, a, a Temple Guardian situation, mm -hmm. White Rabbit's there. And not like there was an arc, a three-issue arc where White Rabbit's a thing. No, oh. it's always she gets her butt kicked. The end. Artists must like, like drawing her. That's the only thing I could think. She's a sexy rabbit lady, and artists like to draw that. That sounds about right. I mean, and uh, they, they know what sells. Yeah, <laughs> they sure do. <laughs> uh, also, hey, you know, I mentioned Circus of the Strange. There, uh, there was Mister Toad in there who got to be in the cartoon with Pig, but also there was another character in there, Phosphorus Rex, which mm. I only bring up because Phosphorus Rex also got to be in Beware the Batman in a later episode with a completely changed origin. Mm. But also, Phosphorus Rex keeps coming back in the comics. I, I You know, I, I remember that thing. being... And independent from Circus of Strange. I remember him coming up one time very recently, and I don't... And I was... I, I didn't recognize him at all. Uh, both also, Arkham Knight stories. Okay, there you go. Phosphorus Rex is all over those for some reason, and I do not know why. Because again, he's just he's just a fire guy. Like, do you already have Firefly? Why do you yeah. need him? Yeah, there were a couple of fire based characters in the '90s, at least, and I remember that being a thing. Shit, I'm trying to remember who the other one was, but there were like during Nightfall, there was like a two fire based villain. Like, we have two fire based villains, <laughs> and both of them were setting fire to the city at like opposite angles, and like. It becoming a, a Batman being like, ah, and like that was the fire arc. But of, was it fire Batman bug or was that a new 52 thing? Oh, that sounds right. Because I, I remember, remember that was a thing in the new 52. Like, oh, it's fire bug now, not fire fly. I'm like, wait, were these two different characters or did they just think bug was better than fly? I think it's the same. I think, I think they're different characters. I think, I think they are too. Yeah. Which yeah, God damn. Right. Yeah. Like who was asleep at the wheel that day? How can you both um, coexist here? I don't know. Honestly, you want to do that, just rework Killer Moth's shtick, since moths and flames are ubiquitous. Hey. Uh, really quick, let's jump into some super chats before yes, we uh, get, get it gets away from us. Uh, Ron Caterasano, I like Lincoln March, Thomas Wayne Jr. Could have been uh, great to have a main universe owl man. Oh, we're we'll getting get there, him, don't worry. But I, I agree with you. Silvery Cricket, gotta get start strong. Gotta go with the iconic New 52 headliner, Batman villain, White Rabbit, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. There you go. Oh, yeah, from the Detective Comics run. Yeah, yes. when they were doing like an Alice in Wonderland thing. Again, I feel like that era, no one was reading Detective. Everyone was reading Batman. They threw so much at the wall at that, and none of it stuck. They sure did. Yeah, no, that was one of those things where it's like no one's paying attention to everything. Yeah. Uh, Mike Manhattan, remember three ghosts of Batman? One became Azrael. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Three <laughs> ghosts. Yeah, holy shit. Wow. That's a... Well, oh, yeah, because, like, wasn't, like, Hugo Strange involved in that? And they were cops who were, like, brainwashed to think they were Batman. And it was all the... <laughs> and there was a big one, and there was an Azrael one. Oh, my God. Uh, you're, you're fucking unlocking memories that Seriously. I thought were gone. I remember the big one. I remember what you're talking about, but, like, no, I don't remember that at all. <laughs> yes, the three ghosts of Batman. Again, that was a that was a very Morrison y idea. Like, ooh, they all represent something deep and through in him, different aspects. Right? Does Zura not count? Um Gerald says, Thanks for making my work day better. Well, thanks for being here, Aww. man. Lucky to have you. Thank you. Um Ron Katerasano back to say Batman Beyond had some great ones like Shriek, Kirare, Inc., etc. Yeah, the Batman Beyond villains were terrific. Those I don't. I mean, they're, they're new in as much as they could use them at any point, and they don't. See, like, see I'm, in a, I'm in a weird position with a lot of the Batman Beyond villains. I think they're great designs. I think yes. a lot of them are really two-dimensional, but because the show never got to keep going for like 80 years like the comics did, we never found the three dimensions to them. No. Ink is three-dimensional. Yes. Uh, Kirari doesn't say anything. She's just a cool assassin. Cool character, though, yeah. Cool character. No. Uh, Shriek, I felt, always kind of suffered from like motivation decay, where it's like, yes. okay, so you're a hired hitter for powers, but you keep coming back. For right. no reason. They, they tried to give Terry his own two face in big time. That didn't work. No, no. Do you remember Spellbinder? Yes, Spellbinder. <laughs> I remember Spellbinder. That was a cool one. 
It's, again, amazing design. Even the creators say, eh, we tried a little too hard to make him the scarecrow of the show. And they also said, the problem with having so many stories with Terry in school is that everyone who worked at the school had to become a goddamn super villain. Yeah. And even they thought that was ridiculous by the end. They can't all be super villain. No, it's it's very it's very buffy. You, you got to be careful with that. But uh, yeah, I liked I, I liked Ink a lot. And um, I, yeah, the, there's something there with with Batman Beyond. And I liked their approach where they were like, oh, man, the Royal Flush Gang, the best version of them. Yeah. Ten. Yeah. Easily Her, the best as, version. as his Catwoman. Amazing. Love it. Love it to death. Great. So stuff. well done. Uh, and uh, Illuminati helping us out. Thank you very much, Illuminati. Always keeping a, keeping a watchful eye over us. Even um, even his Cobra cult, uh, Rachel Gould oh, yeah. was solid too for the two episodes. But then they turned him into a dinosaur. He doesn't get to come back. No, it's true. <laughs> even they said, they're like, why the hell did we do that? Uh, likewise, uh, Abel Kane, the Splicer cult leader guy, he was great one episode. Never right. came back. Yeah. <laughs> So many great villains who never got a second shake at the stick, which is a shame. I think that's a, uh, that has a lot to do with the fact that the show just didn't last long enough. Like they just also didn't have that. the time. They were just they were just stuck. You know, um, what was it? There's another super chat that I wanted to mention, and that was uh, Tevia who says, "What about uh, Mother from Batman and Robin Eternal?" <laughs> Funny yeah, you should say I'm that. I'm sure you had Tevye. one. Yeah. Funny you should say that, Tevi, because literally mother was my impotence behind writing this because uh, another YouTuber was talking about like, you know, who are the great uh, Batman villains? And I'm like, yeah, you know, uh, mother, no one ever talks about her because she's only in Batman Robin Eternal, a story that came about to try and fix continuity and reintroduce like Azrael and Cassandra and everything. Yeah, but several crises later, this story doesn't matter anymore and makes no sense because they put the universe back the way it was anyway. Shame, because Mother is great. Does Mother hold up? I, I think she would if she had ever come back for anything else. The idea for Mother, who don't remember Batman Eternal, is that she basically kidnaps children from around the world and sells designer children to the richest and most powerful people. So essentially she's a dark reflection to what Batman does with the Robins is right. what it is. And I feel like no one has ever really challenged Batman on that particular level anymore. What's like, well, what's the difference between what you do and I do? We both take <laughs> unloved children and mold them into the best versions. And this else, I just make a little money along the way. Right. Uh, well, and that's, that's really what it is, isn't it? I mean, like that's why you're doing it is to make money. You monster. Yeah. Like, and, and power and influence because the children I raise become CEOs and presidents and everything else. So this is my weird backdoor way to try and rule the world. But in a weird way, Batman, are you not doing this to rule the superhero world because all your children will go on to be the Justice Leaguers and the Outsiders mm -hmm. and every other team of the future? So really, again, we are not so different, you and I. I, I, I think there's I think there's an opportunity for Mother to come back and because that's that origin point, like that that concept in and of itself is evergreen like that really that can work so, and especially as, as the bat family will only ever expand mm -hmm. so you got time you can do she that. also got to be on tv she was in one episode of that gotham show oh there you go because gotham went on for too long and exhausted every villain so they were just fucking adapting everybody <laughs> that's right uh s keeping in the uh morrison era i think we we would be remiss yes. we didn't talk about dr uh dr hurt dr simon hurt who is technically a new villain but also technically existed in the golden age just yes. wasn't given a name yet so for all intents and purposes he's new right right exactly uh rumored to be thomas wayne mm-hmm Rumored to be Barbatos, maybe even Dark Side. Already, here's the problem with Simon Hurt. Cool concept, but you can't explain him easily like you can explain the Riddler and the Mad Hatter. When it's like, what's Simon Hurt's deal? Well, you see Black Love Society, and you see da 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 da, da and yeah. I've gone cross-eyed. No, it's true. And I think the, that's that's the thing where it's like you don't treat him like a Riddler or a Two-Face. You treat no. him like Randall Flagg, where it's like you're mm -hmm. doing... A, a larger scale story about the end of everything as opposed yep. to a bank robbery or the soul of Gotham city. Big, big concept, almost too big a concept. Yeah. yeah also, when you make him potentially Barbados, it's like uh, how much <laughs> also only exists in that story came back one more time. Yep. Not in a Batman book, but in a Nightwing book as a lead up to death metal. Right. Which is yeah. the only time we ever saw him again. But again, like his origin is also tied to Robin dies at dawn. So like mm -hmm. really, he, he, he's almost more of a Nightwing villain by the end because it's like, yeah, well, my inspiration is because of you. You know, Batman, that's incidental. 
Right. <laughs> so yeah, cool character, not really paid off ever again. It's no. a, it's one of those things where, and, and I think it's a phenomenon that is problematic in comics, which is this fear of Grant Morrison, this this yeah. intimidation of Grant Morrison, where people go, I don't want to touch it. Or I want to touch it too much. You know, like, I want to show how not afraid I am by just beating Grant Morrison ideas into the ground. That's fair. And I think the trick is just to go, Simon Hurt is in the toy chest along with everybody else. Yeah. You know, just look at the trading card and figure out what their stats Mm -hmm. are and tell your own story. Like, don't be intimidated by Grant Morrison. They would not want you to be intimidated by them anyway. Which is basically what Tim Seeley did when brought Hurt back. It's like, hey, isn't this fun? Shouldn't, you know, Hurt fight Nightwing? Isn't that cool? Yeah. And I think the problem is, number one, it leads into death metal. And the other problem is, like, nobody read that. (laughs) (laughs) Or (laughs) it didn't work to to the extent that they hoped it would. You know, I, I, I think the problem with a character like Hurt, too, is because there's so much story wrapped up in this one character and so much, like, uh, you know, oeuvre that you gotta know. You can really only pull the trigger on him once, and right. then every time after that, it's only gonna be diminishing returns from, like, oh, I'm this big conspiracy villain that's tying together years worth of stories. I robbed a bank and tried to sacrifice Damien with a knife after that. Yeah. Oh, well, man, that, I'm sorry. You know, that, that problem is... Uh, inherent in a lot of new villains right Mm -hmm, where mm -hmm. diminishing returns it's not they did their one thing and then what is it they can't win right you have no reason to come back after that yeah it's it's motivation decay like the kg beast was a big deal yeah and it doesn't count in this list because it's not new enough but because not 20 years old it's Mm -hmm. 30 years old yeah but like the kg beast one of those characters where it's like came out swinging major story arc is their first appearance a lot got of really cool stuff. Wins. Yeah, got some wins, but also like is defeated by Batman, yep. and it's in a in a morally compromising situation. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But but does ultimately lose. So every time he shows up, he has to keep losing. Bane shows up, yep. wins, but then can never win that big ever again. Yep, it, it's funny. I, I always think about this in terms of wrestling, where it's like, I oh, see so you gotta you gotta get over your big new monster heel so he gets a lot of wins early on to make him a bigger threat for the big good guy and then once the big good guy gets him he stops getting wins after that and suddenly they're a joke and it's like why were we scared of you again exactly and that's kind of a problem i mean that's like the skeletorization of your villains right like (laughs) uh tick noros has a great point which he says is there villain are there villains that uh, from batman feel would work better elsewhere for example court of alice might work better with green arrow that just immediately i was like oh uh Green Arrow finds out that Queen Industries has been funded by the Court of Owls the entire time. <laughs> They've already done so many cult stories with Green Arrow, which were basically aping on Court of Owls. I think at this point it would feel a little passe. Uh, Anarchy is actually a good example of a Batman villain who did become a Green Arrow villain, and I think he works better because of their political opposition. Yeah, although ironically, then there's Anamanapia, who was a Green Arrow villain that became a Batman villain, and then no one read the rest of it because it didn't get finished. Yep. How about that? I feel those two are always swapping villains back and forth for one reason or another. I think they should more. I think they they should too. There should be a lot more of that. Like there should be a lot more crossover. Uh, Heck, when they reintroduced Firefly in the Jeff Lemire years, he was a Green Arrow villain because like, hey, you got arrows. I got a flamethrower. We're actually pretty evenly matched. Yeah, yeah. And you got a city I can set on fire. Why not? Oh, no, wait, it, what, was it a Firefly or was it Killer Moth, actually? I want to say oh. he, he, he got one of them. He got one of the Batman one of the, villains. One of the Batbugs? I don't yeah. remember. That's interesting. Yeah, because uh, he, like, joined that, like, Green Arrow villain collector that was Brick and Red Dart and, like, a few other ones. It's like, and I'm here, too. Right. Uh, Silver Cricket, designer was a cool drawing. I had to drop the book. How did it turn out? Crappy. Uh, he, he, he was a zombie who was being controlled by Joker, which is why I didn't put him on the list, because he's he's nobody, actually. No. He's just the Joker. Who is but, I, but I think that the designer uh, is a character, and we should talk about that a little bit, because the designer is one of those characters that he has a distinct look. Very. He's a he Metal Gear Solid origin, villain is what he is. Straight up. But, like, he has an origin, uh, or at the very least, like, the, the, the fake origin of the designer. Or is it? I don't know. They, they imply that he's fucking Moriarty. Right. The Sherlock Holmes stories, which I'm like, really? Okay. Yeah. Which I was like, that's a neat idea, I suppose. But uh, the designer is one of those characters where, yes, was it a zombie being puppeted by the Joker in that story? Yes. 
originally was it not supposed to be that i believe it was i think i'd heard that it was supposed to be something else that it was not it was supposed to be alfred apparently is what i heard and i'm like see i thought it was because designer is ironically over designed and seems like something batman and alfred would cook up it's true um yeah that the the designer was alfred infiltrating the villains yeah playing a role because he's an actor exactly uh the designer exists so anyone can be that character True enough. So it, while the villain who was revealed to be the designer was not anything. Yeah. That doesn't mean they can't do more designer stories. Oh yeah. I mean, identities change hands all the time. Also, what is it? The designer really feels like they're riffing on the master planner arc and master planner from Spider-Man, who ironically was not a person, but turned out to be Doc Ock. (laughs) That's right. Yeah. Uh, And, and that's the thing is right. Like I don't believe the master planner counts as an original villain because there's no look right master planner was just a silhouette yeah and then revealed to be doc ox silhouette like this is a look this, this is, is a character a yeah this is a guy designs had to be made copyrights had to be filled that's a character true <clears throat> but uh it hasn't been paid off and i don't think anyone ever will not for a long time anyway God, he looks so anime is the thing. To do. There's, th- that's an interesting thing, too. When Hard we talk to believe. About, when we talk about, like, Batman villains of the last five years, there's a real animeization of yeah. Batman villains. Angel Breaker, perfect example. I'm like, oh, come on, Angel Breaker. I, I prefer the original Japanese Bokuno Angel Breaker. <laughs> <laughs> you want to talk about Angel Breaker for a minute? Because we might as well. Character. Uh, and by big character, I mean it counts. Yeah, because she's new. She's in yeah. a thing. She's all over Shadow War. Right, Shadow War. Is that a t- is that a Williamson invention? Yes, it is. There you go. Uh, lesson learned, by the way. Uh, thanks, James Tynan the Fourth, for blazing that trail. Uh, look, when you look, come on a Batman book, make sure to invent at least five new characters. Look, 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 look at this video game boss here. This is a <laughs> video game boss. She teleports all over the place. She's got a big sword. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> is that it? That's that's it. We don't know anything about her. She just shows up. She's working for Talia now. Yeah. Oh, um. So before we jump into her, uh, I wanted to ask the designer, I think too overly designed doesn't have mm. staying power. You? Yeah, same deal. Again, does not cut a good silhouette. Mm-mm, mm-mm. Too much, too busy, too much going on. Yeah, but Blood Rain here. <laughs> what do you yes. think? Uh, staying power? I think on one hand, I think that the design, I think if you dropped the headgear, mm. With like the jewel, which I'm sure is like the source for powers or some god. Or god. Yeah, we don't even know why she can do what she does. But uh, the 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 plumage meets the 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 TNA and the cape. This is not too bad. There's something. There's something about it. There's something there. I don't think it's. I don't think it fits Batman, but maybe it fits Batman today. Mm. Um, but yeah, Angel Maker Breaker. Breaker, thank you, Angel Breaker. Which, which again, it's like Angel Breaker, Ghost, Ghost Maker, Maker God Heart Breaker, Love Taker. <laughs> Don't you mess around. <laughs> uh, yeah, Angel Breaker, not a great name. It's not so a, anime. Not a half bad silhouette. Yeah, it, it, time will tell. Weirder things have happened, and as we said with White Rabbit, people like drawing pretty ladies, so maybe they will continue to draw her as yeah, well. Making her a woman is step one. Of your rise to power. Again, you can put that on, you know, expensive statues, hot topic gear, cosplayers. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's a whole thing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, don't discount, you know, the power of cosplayization. I think <laughs> many characters survive because people like dressing up as them. Yeah, that's true. Uh, made it harder, though, because she's pale. You got to do the makeup, mm, too. No doubt. Uh, NBL a paladin. Uh, nobody from Batman and Robin is underrated, and Nora Freeze never got time to shine. No, one story, and then they killed her. Yeah, that was weird. I liked that. So crazy. Uh, Oh, I guess we're talking about Batman and Robin. I didn't put nobody on there. I guess nobody Ducard's kid should count from, like, like early New 52, even though he's only in that one story, never comes back again, and then his daughter uh, becomes an ally to the Bat family and takes up the mantle. Yeah. Which is hilarious. It didn't, which is hilarious because nobody's like, oh, all your villains dress in costumes. You know, they're all so flamboyant and over the top, but not me. I'm nobody. Really? Because your costume looks, looks like, like a, a costume to me. 
Looks like you definitely tried. <laughs> and, and your daughter took up your mantle. So yeah, you, you're none of those things you claim to be. Yeah, if you have a mantle, you have a costume and a story. That's that's that man. So there, we invalidated all of you in just a short amount of time. Yeah, and that's one of those things where, again, like the design, it's not screams quite screams early New Fifty Two, which yeah, it was. It's, it's try hard, and the the origin doesn't last. It's just not. It's just nope. not there. It's just not nope. there. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> nobody continues to be nobody. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, St. Lucia, uh, Kite Man, not new, but is also getting a show. Kite yes, Man is, is not new. Kite Man is getting a renaissance. Not, uh, but that's it. I can't believe he's getting a spinoff, and I can't believe they're doing Archie's place with it, where he takes over the bad guy bar. Yeah. Y you I know those guys, Schumacher and company, they know television and they know tropes where it's like, well, yeah, if we're doing a spinoff, we need to make it a commentary on spinoff so he gets to run the bar now. Yeah, I guess that's I guess that's that's better than nothing. Yeah. Uh, Bland man. Remember the Joker's daughter? Yeah, me neither. Oh, Birthday yeah. boy from Earth One was pretty disturbing. Great point. Holy crap. Joker's daughter. Was uh, she even a Batman villain? Because she got like a zero year issue or not zero yeah. year, like a villains month issue. Yeah. And then I think she fought Catwoman. I don't think she ever actually fought Batman. Never fought Batman, but is clearly made to be a uh, a Batman villain. Like that the Joker's daughter, you, you can't not think batman when you invent the Joker's i guess daughter. but but also technically it's like weren't there other joker's daughters yes we count dwell a dead so this. it's like is she even really new in that regard is she just a weird new 52 updating of an old concept agreed i never accepted it i never liked it I think that I think that history's with me on that one. The, the best story they ever told with her was when they put her and Harley Quinn on the same version of the Suicide Squad, and Harley just ripped on her for the old whole issue and told her, "You need to quit. You need to retire. This is no way to live your life." Yeah, that's an amazing uh, condemnation of that character. That whole run was underrated. Actually, that's where like Man Bat was a member and had yeah. Like, a it had like a sad death and like the new 52 reverse flash was on it and sacrificed himself to save everyone. And they never knew about right. his sacrifice. That was really good, actually. Yeah. And good point, by the way, it doesn't it's it's Earth one, but could be used anywhere. The birthday boy, mm, one of Comic Pop's favorite villains. Uh, I honestly expect a birthday boy to show up in the Batman. Yeah, shocked um, this character never made the jump to the main universe. Yeah, I hate the birthday boy. It's <laughs> It's just Jason from Friday the Thirteenth Two. Yeah, but well, it was still sack the sack wearing head, mama's yeah. boy monster who can kill people with their bare hands. Like, yeah, it's pretty dark. It's, it's a good gimmick, is the thing. That's the thing. The problem with so many new Batman villains, their gimmicks. You know, they, they, they don't hold up to repeat a thing. But the birthday boy, like, yes, he does birthday related crimes and <laughs> horrible murders. There's so much you can work with. Yeah, the problem with birthday boy is just he's a child murderer who has yeah. a horrible that's it he's not trying to like take over the city or no. anything like he just wants to murder children yeah that's horrific very <laughs> and much so. not marketable hard to no. hard to use but uh you know what lasting impression definitely so you know i i would say not necessarily staying power but not because not for lack of trying it's because of lack of trying. Like he is, mm -hmm. he doesn't exist because no one wants to use him. Yeah. That character was made with an idea in mind being like, Nope, this is going to be what it's going to be. I don't care if they're marketable. We're not going to no. put this face on shirts. And that's the point. That's right. Uh, Frank punchline fits because she's kind of what Harley was supposed to be positioning punchline as the queen of the Royal flush gang is a great move. Mm. Uh, we'll talk about punchline a little bit. I didn't know nope. she was, uh, that, that was the plan. Uh, yes. In the backups, she goes to jail and actually ends up taking over the women's prison gang version of the Royal flush gang. And by extension ends up like warming her tentacles all over them. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, Jason Rayburn, Jane Doe, the mystique camellia uh, of Batman. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't remember that at all. I only remember her from Dan Slott Arkham hell on earth because she comes <sighs> in and out and she's part of a great white story. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, she's just kind of weird and creepy, kills people, steals their faces. <laughs> yeah, which is kind of like a, like a, we've seen that before in Batman. A little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't think there's anything there. It's it's trying to give Batman a chameleon, like figuring, oh, she could be anyone. She could steal any face. Giving Batman a chameleon is not a bad idea. But Clayface. This did not work. You have Clayface, end of story. There you uh, go. You have many Clayfaces, in fact. You, you got Lady Clayface. You need a woman character? Lady Clayface. 
uh, Mickey Veach. Uh, anyone remember Roxy Rocket from the show? I always thought she worked better as a Nightwing or Green Arrow villain. I think she's a fun Batman villain. She's not really a villain. And having rewatched that one episode, it's just like Bruce Timm being horny. She oh, like a, has an orgasm while oh, like it's falling. A super horny episode. Again, I, I feel that was Bruce Timm and Paul Dini being like, hey, can we make the Harley magic strike twice though in the last season of the show? Can we get <laughs> can we get another character to become a big cult icon? And it didn't really work. It did not work. Roxy Rocket did not blow up. Uh but you know, she does work in her own way. Like she's a As great a statue like, and a pinup. Yes. She's a statue and a pinup. That's exactly what she is. She's straight up like merchandising. Merchandising is what Roxy Rock can't is. say she didn't work in that regard. Yeah, I'm not. There's nothing there. I'm sorry. I, I think there could be like a Mark Russell take on her where it's like kind of comedic and kind of like, yeah, I was supposed to be the next big thing, but it never happened for me. You know, I like the idea of there being like, you know, not every villain has to be a child murderer or a face remover. Exactly. Like, That's a, a problem just... with modern villains. No one does any like weird, wacky gimmicks anymore. Right. Like, yeah. And, and you know, it's funny. There's a Marvel equivalent and it doesn't and no one likes them. It's oh, dude, Screwball. Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah, wow. Screwball, like, who got to be in the game. Who got to be in the game. And and in, in true to form, she is the least liked part of that game. Yeah. <laughs> but I like the idea of Roxy Rocket just being like, I like thrill-seeking. Batman is, a, I know he's a regular man. Yeah. So I know he's like my, he's like my equivalent, right? Like, he's clearly a thrill-seeker. Yeah. Like, uh, is there, is it? Is it inappropriate to have a character who just wants to fuck Batman? I like, mean, I mean, you know what I, I mean, like if that's her thing, she's like, I just, I, I'm looking for a dude who can match my level. I mean, there's Maxima whose whole gimmick was she just wanted to fuck Superman. Exactly, so, I mean, she's on the Justice League for Christ's sake. So I think should, there's something they should there. team up, Maxima and Roxy <laughs> Rocket. That should be like a duo book, right? I'm thinking, I, I think Roxy's time has yet to shine. I think there's something there. I think I, there is too. I think no writer has tapped yet again. Mark Russell. What what's that book that's out there right now? Uh Zero uh what is oh, it? I don't the, know. It's it, it's like Red Tornado and like all the lame Justice Leaguers in like a comedy deconstruction book. Yeah, that's true. Um I, she would be an excellent villain for that if you wanted to do the villainous version of that. It's like, yeah, I'm not a triple A villain, but you know, I'm hey. out there every day trying. Yeah. Dark Pectus is a good one. I like Vengeance and Vengeance and Punchline mm. can't stand the others. Vengeance came out two months after Giant Vampire Lady <laughs> from Resident Evil was announced to coincide with it. Yeah, man. Uh, Vengeance. Da daughter of Bane? Clone daughter, Clone of, daughter Bane. of Bane. But she's also only like a couple months old because she was like uh, accelerated in the clone tank and everything. Yeah. I, I don't hate it. It's a good design. It's a decent design. I like the name and I remember I was I think I was talking to Williamson about it where he was like he he I think he came up with the name. I think they were they were bad they were they were passing around ideas and he's like, Well, what's what's Bane's first appearance? Vengeance of Bane. Mm -hmm. Vengeance. Um but uh yeah <laughs> I it's just female Bane. Yeah, they're, they're doing like some Manchurian candidate stuff with her because, you know, her her choices are not her own because she was grown in the lab by the yeah. network, you know, to try and, you know, kill the Joker and everything. And she's yeah. she's striving to be free right now and make her own choices. But so far she hasn't. I think the answer is what happens after this. And also, thank you, chat. One star squadron was the one I was thinking of. <laughs> thank you. Uh, yeah. I think she's also like a derivation, unfortunately. Mm. So that doesn't really work as well. Um, she could be a little more. They're showing her as not being like straight up evil. Like she was willing to join forces with Jim. She leaves him in the lurch when yeah. it counts. But I like the idea. Where it's like, oh, what if there was a good female Bane who eventually joined the Bat family after a fashion? You know what? What would her life be like being a clone trying to reenter society once the Joker stuff is done? And now she's not the Terminator program to kill somebody. Yeah. But then the problem is you've just stripped her of everything. You have to you've given some other writer the opportunity to just do anything with them to reinvent her from the ground up. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Jason Rayburn asks about this character. I don't know nothing about them. Do they maybe remember Cheer from Urban Legends? I dropped uh, Urban Legends. So I don't remember Cheer. I remember the Cheer storyline. Yeah, the dude selling the smiley drugs and everything. Yeah, I think the the fewer clown based characters in Gotham yeah. now, the better. <laughs> Too much face paint. We got to put a moratorium on face paint. 
I think it's just clowns, man. Too many smiles, too many clowns. It's not. A, it's it's enough. It's enough. Hey, Barbara, what do you know about clowns? In this city, they're never funny. <laughs> they're never funny. Ha ha. Good line. <laughs> Uh, what else we got down in your list here? I know there's uh, so many, and like New Fifty Two, of course, introduced a ton. Okay, so uh, we're, we're, I'm still some stuff from the Morrison years yeah, that yeah, we can please. just go right through. Uh, Leviathan, which was their big take at an evil secret society who worked through other villainous groups, and yep. uh, th there was the whole like you know red herring, like oh maybe Doctor Daedalus, Otto Nets, this Nazi spy was their leader, but of course later we find out it's Talia. And yeah. then in the new 52, they divorce Talia from Leviathan and say that Dr. Daedalus was always the leader, only for Talia to come back later as the leader of Leviathan. Yeah. Anyway, it's fucking nuts. Honestly, I think Leviathan worked better in the Grayson book as the like uh, chaos control opposite to Spiral. Yes, yes. And then was laid to rest by Bendis. Yes. <laughs> yeah again to where now it's like what is even leviathan anymore I'm like i don't fucking know and i don't fucking care anymore. i don't fucking care and that's the problem is like they couldn't leviathan couldn't survive the worst story yep and that means no staying power yep no staying power at all real shame uh, mm -hmm. obviously we can't talk about leviathan without talking about the heretic the yes. adult clone of damian wayne the first oh, but not the last yeah, that was weird. I remember I wasn't really into this run, so I was like, eh. but like that image of him murdering Damien was I'll, it's, it'll stick with me forever. But yeah, evil, evil accelerated living clone yes. of Damien. Yes. Also, interesting take on a costume. Let us dress him in Middle Eastern robes and a gas mask. That doesn't look like any other Batman character or villain. That's for sure. Yeah, I, I only like Heretic drawn by Quietly. It's pretty good. Now, remember, uh, Heretic actually got to be in one of those animated movies, but they got rid of the Arab-inspired robes, which makes me think, like, ooh, were they afraid of looking insensitive, so they just changed it and made I it I think worse? so. Which is a real shame, because, like, so? It's like, yeah, that's the part of the world he was from and raised in. That's he's, it. That's he's wearing, he's wearing the clothes of where he was from. Yeah, like, you know, like, we costumify everything. Yeah. It's a Batman villain, for God's uh, sake. Heretic, yeah, no, Heretic uh, Her does not work in the cartoon. No, <laughs> no. That, yeah, that was a bad version. Heretic also came back and was apparently the secret villain of that Adam Glass uh, Titans run where they were all shitty. Oh, okay. Yes. Yes. Wow. Oh, okay. I didn't read he, that. I dropped he, it. He, so. he took another name and you only find out at the end, it's me, the Heretic, because who else can I be? And I'm like, yeah, all right, really. fair enough. <laughs> and i'm like this is bad you had to change your name and your whole gimmick and yeah you, you kind of suck now you're not even really the same you're in name and nothing else yeah, yeah and this is a bad run to begin with so no i i think that heretic works as a damien villain like more than anything else but i also don't think there are very strong damien stories so it's like oh well there you go hell in one of those uh like look to the future stories they had like a weird future teen titans team and they seek to imply that maybe at one point in this alternate future damien takes up the heretic mantle for and himself i i kind of dig that idea but Likewise. uh because it means it's in him you know like yeah. he's he, he has the potential to become that character and also i'm a heretic to the al ghul family i'm a heretic to the bad family i'm a heretic no matter what i do that's just the genius of morrison like that's just that's yeah. infused in the dna like once you follow that and that's the thing like that's where, like, you separate, like, great from good. Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. like, I got this idea. You know, I, I don't want to, like, keep harping on the KGB, but it's, like, <laughs> born from the, like, current storylines of the Cold War at yep. the time. But what else is there? And also ninjas were popular, so he's kind of like a ninja, too. And it's like, that's it? But with Heretic, like... Once you once you do the initial story and then you investigate where it could go, mm -hmm. it goes in directions that are faithful to the character, but also work for de de for for development of the protagonist. Right. As opposed to KG Beast, where it's like, well, when the Soviet Union falls, what the hell do you do with them? <laughs> but hey, Russia's acting a fool again, so now KG Beast can be the villain in a new Nightwing story because it fits and it works. Yeah, more relevant than ever. <laughs> you see human history is circular because none of us ever actually learn from anything so you know yeah but we do write it down sure do <laughs> uh before we get into the court of owls let's just really quick talk about mr bloom yes mr bloom because, because mr bloom is a character that i never liked that my wife is a big fan of 
and is the only reason she's even reading that horrible oh task force z task force z book what a weird place for him to show up again after all this time uh I, and i think it's just because there's not a lot there and there's a there's a great potential for uh for development and for someone to make their mark I appreciate that he looks different. Again, doesn't look like any other Batman villain. Looks like came from a completely different creative planet. Wasn't really a Bruce villain. Was a Gordon as Batman villain. And then kind of became a Duke villain too because his origin is, you know, tied to his. Yeah. And now he's in Task Force Z, a Red, Hood, a Red Hood book. He's kind of like an unloved stepchild of Batman villains. He keeps getting kicked around the road to everyone else in the family except it's for Bruce true. himself. It's true. It's a disappointment because, like, I think that Snyder wanted him to be something like Gordon's Joker kind of character. Yeah, yeah. And it just didn't get there because because his origin is tied to police violence and yeah. you know like uncaring city officials. But like, we don't care about that anymore. It's like why why Bloom why Flower? I don't know. why well I, I think it was because Snyder wanted to create Slenderman I think yeah. Slenderman was really popular at the time it's like what if Slenderman was a Batman villain no doubt that's what it was um but the other problem is he only works when he's drawn by Greg Capullo mm, yeah <laughs> uh Max M says how about the Arkham Knight uh oh, was literally in Detective Comics 1000 or uh so I remember yeah that's right so Arkham Knight is hilarious because there's the game version of Arkham Knight that everyone knows, which, hey, spoiler for an old game, it turned out to be Jason. And, uh, oh, yeah, they lied about it before the game came out. Yeah. And then there's the comic version, which is Astrid Arkham, who I actually kind of liked Astrid Arkham's story as uh, Tomasi told, you know, grew up in the asylum, was unafraid of all the uh, inmates there. Uh, yeah. Feels Batman doesn't do enough to address the mental illness of his villains. And as such, she has vowed to do so herself because she feels a sort of protective uh, nature to all these Arkham criminals. Uh, uh, Phosphorus Rex worked for her. Ha! He, he was one of the people she tried to save and like gave counseling to all of them. I'm like, oh, there's definitely something there. Here's the thing, though. Yeah. She becomes so sympathetic as a villain that we get a whole future state story where she has the Arkham Knights as a team and they're yeah. fighting back against the evil powers that be. I'm like, oh, so she didn't even stay a villain for long because literally the origin you gave her is not the origin of a villain. Right. <laughs> yeah. So it doesn't. Re you could always make the Arkham Knight a villain again. It doesn't have to be this character. Yeah. I think it works. I don't like the Arkham Knight. No. I don't like the idea i don't like the design i think it's like a weird concept and you know it's aping off of the batman like i'm taking your your thing and i'm owning and i'm turning it into something else but like There's so much of that so much of it, that it also feels like a video game invention does it that's the thing that i'm always gonna hold against like this didn't come from the comics this came from the video games because yep. you went too big in the sequel and you didn't know what to do for the third installment so instead yep. of just letting scarecrow be the big badge you felt you needed to do all this other shit agreed uh, Ron Katsarasano, how new is Black Mask? Black Mask was created in 1985. Yes, Black Mask is very old. Yes, the, the Roman Sionis version. There was a newer version who was Amad one of the Arkhams. I forget which Arkham it was, yeah, but one of the Arkhams became Black Mask for like a hot minute before the new 52. Yeah. Irish Tartan 92 says, I think Nora Freeze ended up joining the Wildcats at the end of the arc where she died and then they just faked her death, but I could be wrong. Really? Either way, definitely agree with you guys that there was more to be done with her as a bad villain. Oh my God. Is that how that story ended? Nora Freeze joins the Wildcats in Urban Legends? <laughs> Holy shit. I, I can't tell if that's a promotion or a demotion, honestly. Yeah, I love that idea. Uh, I loved the look. Like when that, when that reveal happened in, I think it was the Tomasi Gleason run. Yep. It was so cool. It was a good like, story. It was, you know what it was? It was well written and it was earned. I was just sure like, this was. is this is a decent concept. Cause like, what the hell else are you gonna do with Nora effing freeze? At you this can't point? do it. Like, so you might as well just turn her. Have, and I love the idea of the switch where it was like, he's like, no, Nora, no. <laughs> yeah, she turns on him and it's like, yeah, you know, the stuff you put in my brain, it's made me crazy. But also maybe I've always secretly harbored a resentment for you for all these years. So yeah, you get to go back in the ice and I get to go free now. Yeah. Uh, I also, I, I, I think it's funny that she, if she joined the Wildcats, I also don't like that. I think the Wildcats should only be Wildstorm. Mm. Like, not that they shouldn't be in the DC universe. I think that the public at large has proven that they can't be in the DC universe. But I like 
I, I like them being Wildstorm characters. Jim Lee's going to keep trying. Yeah. Funkatorial cheers. You too, hey. man. Thank you. And Jace Jensen, does Mr. Bloom count? I know he hasn't been a Batman villain since Gordon was Batman. Uh, he, yes, he does count. He was originally a villain to kill people, uh, and he could always be a villain again. And he's in Task Force Z, so you can read him. He's about, still read in the Bat family orbit. Exactly. Michael Steven, does continuity fight does continuity Batman fight too many celestial threats? It's hard to make a guy who somersaults away from Omega Beams struggle with two these. It's fair. Oh, we'll, we'll get to the celestial threats, don't you worry. We're yeah. just about to enter the Snyder era of villains. Uh-huh. Steven Coronado, what do you think is the key to making a new villain that's memorable and can last for a long time in the Batman mythos? It's tough. Oh, that's it's a tough. Gimmick. It's it's I think it has a lot to do. Well, it's any it's any new character, right? Silhouette has to be iconic in some mm -hmm. way. It has to be simple, simple, but distinct. You got a simple, distinct uh, silhouette. Look is very important for three. The, 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 for me, the, there's a there's a trifecta when it comes to comic book uh, staying power. And it's mm -hmm. look, origin and like and presentation. Yeah. And so when it comes to the villain, the villain has to be. It has to great have a good look. But it mm -hmm. also has to matter and it has yep. to matter in a way that isn't artificially inflated and it has to be a ma and it matter in a way that matters to the protagonist. So you have to be like, who is the villain for who's whose villain is this? Like I could imagine you be making a really cool Dick Grayson villain that Batman fights first. Yes. And he's like, I'm not here for you. Like having that care, having that turn where it's like, you don't matter to me. He matters to me. You know, that kind of thing. Like, also, too, I mean, you know, something that I'm always a sucker for is if a villain can reflect something in the hero, something true to them. But granted, that's harder to do for some of these characters who have been around for 80 years. We've reflected every aspect of your character several hundred times over. We can't keep doing it. Right. Like, yeah, like Abyss. I feel bad because like, I don't think Abyss worked, but I think they're nah, think saying they something true about Batman where it's like. You, you know, you would, but the Arkham Knight did it too, where it's like you ignored me and you threw away like this idea. There's so like, many villains who were like Abyss. I, I I was really actually disappointed with Abyss when I'm like, really, that's it? That's yeah. everything you're about? I, I kept waiting for the reveal too, because uh, what is it? Luther tells a story about this winery and all the yes. tragedy around it. I'm like, oh, that's going to come back, right? Because Abyss is actually the kid that survived that winery. No, he's just some schmuck. Okay. Yeah, no, no, Abyss is a shame. And like, but also the look is to, you know, it, this this is one of those things. Abyss is ghost maker and again. it's designer. He's like, again, he's a talent again. Like these, this is like the destiny of vacation of Batman villains where it's like, yes. people are going to remember like in the 2020s, they made these villains that all look like xenomorphs. And they, they look like toys. They all look, they like, look like toys. Toy. They look like toys. And it's like, doesn't work. And there's nothing about them outside of them looking like video game shooter skins. Mad Hatter eats your lunch. He's a much better design, a much better silhouette. Yeah, no. And it's like Mad Hatter. I mean, if you were like, if you were in a playground picking villains, Mad Hatter sucks, mm -hmm. right? Because you're like, oh, he can't oh, do anything. My lovely tea party, and I have a big hat, and I'm Ooh, an old I'm man who loves young cards. women. Right? Like that's that's not sexy. That's not cool. Abyss is cool. Ghostmaker's cool. Yeah, where's the spinoff potential, man? They need to hold up their own six issue mini and have right. their own hot toy statue. Right, but you ain't selling no six issues if anybody doesn't read your damn book. Yeah, people think your character sucks. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I mean, like that's the problem, right? Like too, that too much trying to make these villains super cool out the box without like actually trying to dig any deeper into them. Yeah, but like simplicity and relevance, mm -hmm. but not relevance relevance in the human condition, not relevance to like this is a villain for the twenty first century. Yeah. Like no, no, this is a villain for the for, for the for the ninety nine percent. Get the hell out of here. Like, no one wants that. No one, despite the fact that like cell phone use and social media is like ubiquitous in y young people culture, no one wants punchline. Like to be like, you know, I'm on the phone. I, I'm I got face. To, you know what I mean? Like I I I'm a social media guru. You know? See, I'll actually weirdly disagree with that because I think that's actually what makes Punchline her scariest when we got that one shot that was all about homegrown radicalization. It's that like, was yes, later though. That wasn't was when much... she first showed up. They, it wasn't too much later. It was like it was, it was it right was, after. It was right after but that's something that, that's like almost like an afterthought yeah. for me. Like that's that's what you open with. You open, like you could 
punchline's scary if the if the the first half of the book is watching her become punchline which is or what watching, the backup stories were right like watching a character go insane or mm. be radicalized is heartbreaking and scary that that would make me care mm-hmm. but watching punchline like be like i'm killing my professor because i love the joker i'm like that's so she, uninteresting it's like me. she already showed up fully formed and then they went back it's like now nope, you should have reversed this is you should have actually if you it. wanted to give her staying power you should have told the radicalization story first because here's the thing you sold the comic book already this isn't a fucking youtube video where you need to hook them in the first two seconds <laughs> you know like they you you sold the book that like seems to be the idea where it's like let us sell them on this image first <laughs> and foremost like and listen you do that with the promos, with the marketing. But in the comic book, you, you sell the image at the end. Because you've and already got them. And yet that marketing seemed to work because apparently oh, that first punchline issue sold really well. I, I I hate that the speculator market is back and dumber than ever. <laughs> I, that's the thing, right? Like, Because that's why it sold. Because people were like, new character. But Miracle Molly, you can get that issue anytime you want. <laughs> Miracle Molly almost put her on the list, but not really a villain. Helps Batman more than she hinders him. They don't even fight. Yeah. I, Miracle Molly, you could turn her into a villain at any point. This is one of those things where I'm like, any of these characters could be villains. Uh, Miracle Molly was obviously billed as a villain. Yes. Even um, though that was not the case at all. Not the case. It was a bait and switch. I think that was one of those things where they like deliberately de- like deceived the audience. I will say Miracle Molly and the Unsanity Collective did speak to something rather interesting in Batman, and that is if you had the chance to start over and delete all your trauma, would you do it? Right. And obviously Batman has a lot of stuff that holds him down, but ultimately Batman represents, no, we are who we are because of the good and the bad. Humanity is a rich tapestry, yep. and we can't just shut it all off, even if we really want to, even if we're tempted. I'm like, okay, that's something. That's a minor, minor thing in the really dumb Scarecrow story. Yeah, and that's a shame because, like, that could be well again okay you said that what's what's left for them yeah uh milkman says mr bloom was fun during the jim gordon era i agree yeah uh, i didn't like it when it came out but i'm i'm turning around on it uh cully frederick you guys hear about naomi getting the axe of course i did uh, seven cw shows are getting the axe now because this is always what happens when a network gets sold and new bosses come in they're like okay time to purge everything that came before because it's yeah. all about me let me tell you something uh what was really funny was i just i took a quick look at my naomi episode of back issues and in it like just casually i go you know but everybody's gonna love this uh comic book that was clearly inspired to make a tv show that will be canceled in half a season and, and according to my friend Matt, who was like a big fan of the comic and tried to watch the show, the show doesn't even do the comic. No. So no. what was even the point? I don't know. I saw some of the CG and I was like, this is horrendous. This is below horrendous. Uh, Aaron says, uh, just joining, but does anybody remember Tiger Shark? Oh, I remember Tiger Shark. Tiger Shark's on my list. Technically, Tiger Shark, Snyder created for his detective comics run. Yes. But every villain that Snyder created for his detective comics run eventually got folded into the new 52, including Tiger Shark. But I think Tiger Shark, I mean, like, and that's the thing, right? Like, because there's, there's the Tiger Shark that's like from jock yes but there's another bat or dc tiger shark character yeah but i don't think they're the same so i think no, no, no. I, I think tiger shark is yes we're talking about this one the the suit wearing animal hunting weird crack teeth modern day pirate smuggler yeah i didn't think there was any staying power for tiger shark Again, I love him in theory. But yes. There's, but there's not much when you scratch the surface. It's like, yeah, you know, we're giving Batman his own Craven the Hunter style villain. You know, he loves exotic animals and the finer things in life. And I'm like, okay, I guess there's not much there. <laughs> yeah, but like, just, you know what? Try. Like, there's nothing wrong with trying, I guess, as long as it's coming from a place of genuine creativity and not a place of like, I need to pad my fucking resume. Uh, Cat Lawyer, Comic Pop always gets paid. Here's some- <laughs> Thank you very much, Cat Lawyer. <laughs> nice. The Pizza Poppy always gets paid. <laughs> Irish uh, Tart 92, just check my Urban Legends trade. And yep, Nora's there with the Wildcats at the end no of that. Oh, shit. They even redesigned her, which I'm not a huge fan of. Thanks for the great Wow. Thanks, Irish Tatum. And the fact that that Martin. flew under so many people's radar because no one else was reading Urban Legends at a point. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, I feel bad because I liked that. Same. But, but like, I just couldn't. I couldn't justify it. I was just Crazy. like, I'm done. I'm out. 
by the way, here it is. Oh yeah, I don't like that either. Too much purple. I'm glad that the uh, I'm glad the Wildcats are back <laughs> in their own way. And I had a I had a chat with uh, with King a while ago where I was like, "Is Gen 13? Can Gen 13 work?" And he's like, "No." Aww. I'm like, "Can you bring it back?" He goes, "I think it only exists because of the art." Wow. Like, and I'm like, "Okay, that's a, that's uh, a real no nonsense <laughs> response from the man." Yeah. No. no. No, he I'll, took a second, but he was like, no. I'll, I'll, I'll bring back Human Target. I'll make people think differently of Mr. Miracle, Gen 13. <laughs> We're no. not getting a 12-issue video of Tom, from Tom King. Dude, are you kidding me? A 12-issue mini Gen 13 from Tom King with art by J. Scott Campbell? Yeah. That would be fucking unbelievable. You'd buy it five times. I'd buy 20 copies. <laughs> uh, Quiggles, Scribbles, uh, Court of Owls, the best new villains, hands down. Do you want to get? Do you want to jump to that? Because we're in the, the Snyder era. Sure, we're in the Snyder. I mean, they definitely cast the biggest shadow. There's no Easily. doubt about it. For a lot of people, it was their first exposure to new Batman villains because they were just reading Batman comics for the first time in the new yeah. Fifty Two. Yeah, they're creepy. They're cool. They have an interesting connection to Gotham City and challenge Batman in a different way that he isn't normally challenged. But boy, did they suffer from diminishing returns. Yeah, they could keep working because they're a clandestine organization that's responsible for evil. Like every organization, like you could keep doing that. That first arc is one of the best Batman comics of all time. It's it's so good. And again, too, when we talk about the Court of Owls, we're also talking about the Talon Assassins, who yes. are super cool and super iconic. Great costume, black and gold, great silhouette. Cool gimmick, because we know that owls don't build their own nest. They only destroy the nests of other things. They're the natural predators of bats. How cool yeah. is that? Here's the problem with the Talon, though. Yeah. Talons have the same problem. I like to call it the ninja paradox. One uh, ninja is an unstoppable killing machine. Oh my god, uh, Cobra has a ninja. We gotta get our own ninja to stop them. When there's more than one Talon, they're flunky henchmen who are easy to beat. No. Oh my god, they're the foot ninjas. Oh, look how easy we beat them up. They're putties, they're foot ninjas. You you, you yeah. need one Talon. You don't need a thousand Talons. Although, that scene of the of all the Talons at the end, like the reveal that there were more Talons. Was very cool. And when they, when they break into the cave... And it's like, you know what that is? That is just, that is solid writing, great art, good storytelling. You're watching Batman be broken. You watch the, 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 the deepening of his mythology and lore without, mm -hmm. without, without circuit, despite the fact that owls do take over nests. Yeah. This, the story didn't like supplant what came before no, or take over something else or, or, or change the way you looked at everything. It was, it was just a way to deepen the character and, and look at Batman from another perspective. Played That's into all Snyder's for. own love of history and architecture. Yeah. So yeah. they come from a real genuine place. Yep. Uh, of course, you know, the Court of Owls, they don't really have a leader, but in this story they did, and it was Lincoln March, and maybe he was Bruce's long-lost brother. Maybe he wasn't, but he was also main universe Owl Man. but then he went away until yeah. he was the final villain in batman eternal but by that yeah. point the shine had already come way off and then they literally bury him alive in robin war and at that <laughs> point we're just pantsing the court of owls at this point when they're getting beaten up by literal mm. children i remember um that last that penultimate chapter when he discovers them dead yeah i was like this is fucking amazing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then there's one more issue and he fights this guy. And that I was, was like, me. and I was like, this is not terrible. And I, and because it was new 52, you know, there was an implication that like, there was no multiverse and they were yeah. like, they were like, this is owl man. Yeah. And this I'm like, deal. that's a cool idea in theory, but again, no one ever did anything with it. And it's like, I, I think that the trick is these writers need to stop writing for other people. And start writing their own. Like, if they have an idea for Lincoln March, like if Snyder had an idea for for him, mm. do it. Don't set him up and then go like, ladies and gentlemen, I've created this rich, amazing character, and anyone can go take it and run with it. And then no one does. Or when they do, it's like lame. The, or the it's not what they were. It's not the implication. Yeah, absolutely. I think the only time that the Court of Owls showed any signs of life at all was ironically not in a Batman book, but in a Nightwing book mm. where Nightwing attempts to infiltrate them because he also has a rich shared history with them now, too, and the Grayson yeah. family and the Gray Son. 
Uh, it wasn't, uh, it was in that story we discovered that they're not just a Gotham thing. They're an international group that operates in cells and everything. And I'm like, okay, but after Nightwing and a Raptor beat them too, they have again been thoroughly pantsed. You, th th their great ability was they, that they were mysterious and clandestine. Now everyone fucking knows them and you can't put that genie back in the bottle. You can never be, you can never fall in love again for the no. first time. You can never be a clandestine organization. Now, now you're just any cult. Now you're no different than Cobra. You're yep. no different than the cult of crime. You're just, you're just more schmucks in masks. Yeah. Man, I'm just thinking about um, about how in Doomsday Clock they introduced mm. like the Judge Owl or whatever. Yes, because you know a court has to have a judge, right? And then no one did anything with it, and I was no. like, and it was so clearly like last minute additional. You know, we need to make this relevant because people mm -hmm. think this isn't connected. And then like, it's just that sucks. Like it's we just every time you mention Sanctuary, Sanctuary. Yeah, that sucked too. It was just like this doesn't work doesn't work um sure doesn't owl man doesn't work in this outside of that one sequence of him being like i'm your brother and i'm like that's a really cool idea yep oh well uh girk pectus i love your show nope i thought i was a i saw i thought i saw a ghost once and i honestly didn't care saw it a couple more times finally realized it was a window ad <laughs> there you go. yep thanks a lot uh it's not my show but i appreciate it anyway um yeah i think that i think the court of owls do have staying power but they are in the hands of lesser writers or lesser ideas or in the hands of people who are like pushing it. You know, like owl man didn't work, mm. but the court of owls does, but they're, but the problem is they're, they're used wrong. <laughs> exactly. You know how you revitalize them. Yeah. You do, you do a time travel story where Batman or someone goes back in time to a point in history when they were more powerful and more clandestine. You, you literally go. turn the clock back a bit. Right. Uh, Elizabeth Russell, uh, hey guys, hope you're well. I think of all the portrayals of Joker, I think Grant Morrison's version might be the most interesting interpretation. It's certainly one with the, that, that, that. It's interesting because I was reading a Grant Morrison Justice League book with Joker in it, and I was like, it's nothing here. Like, th they don't have anything to say about Joker. Yeah, and then just... later they do. And I'm like, that's kind of cool, cool. But like, I don't know if, I, like, I don't think that Frank Miller or Grant Morrison, like some of the greatest writers, have any opinion about the Joker. Mm. you know what i mean like joker is in dark knight returns but like and and there's a whole de like thing dedicated to them but like i think miller cares more about two-face in that book than he yeah. cares about joker or superman than joker mm -hmm. you know he's like he's in it but like who cares and i i, I do like the portrayal of joker in like r.i.p like I, that that i will i will cop to I will, the, yeah. the design is fun too i like the whole like macklemore side shaved suspenders look he's got going on yeah that was pretty cool no the and the idea of like yeah after all of that like after all of that then bet then joker showing up being like hey i'm like yes that's don't joker forget right. about b <laughs> uh lance talks comics and manga what about the dealer from batman the black mirror that is also on my thing here the Good. dealer technically invented uh by snyder when dick was batman but also got patched over later i think in batman eternal actually as yeah, well too because probably. they were it was a weekly series and we had to fill it up with everyone i had no interest or care about the dealer i also assumed the dealer was joker in disguise ah, that's funny uh, I think Mirror House is definitely a clever concept. The organization he runs, we sell dark and macabre items from superhero yeah. history. Again, it's it's a villain who services other villains, right? Which is like kind a, of a clever idea that they never yeah. ran with. And also, he becomes a monster at the end. He shoots himself up with a bunch of drugs. Yeah, that's kind of lame. Yeah, but it's a neat idea. The idea of them having acts like the idea of like there being like a power broker of macabre or uh coveted or wanted superhero items is like a cool idea mirror house is also kind of feels like a proto court of owls too and knowing the same guy wrote it like mm -hmm. the idea wasn't fully formed yet but it right was <laughs> that's true all right who else we got all right here let's uh let, let's uh lightning round a couple of these sure uh, yeah so obviously we got uh again let's do some minor ones first roadrunner remember roadrunner I do, and I I hated it. He's a used car salesman with robot legs. Again, villain who helps other villains source cars can run fast sometimes. Yep, I thought that was super dumb. Yeah, and it, and it didn't work. It's it's something though. It's you know again, it's it's not a try hard villain. He's just a guy with legs. He's fast. He's pretty fast. Gotta do not something super fast. Yeah. 
Uh, obviously, we got to mention James Gordon Jr., who I will straight up say, I think this villain had great staying power. Ironically, more staying power as a Batgirl villain mm -hmm. because of the familial connection. I mean, that has yeah. to be. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think that James Gordon Jr. is one of those characters where it's like, when they show up, it should matter and it should be yes, cool. And, it, and it, I think it did. Like, especially mostly in that, it does. Mostly it does. I don't like how horrible it is for Gordon, mm. but I do think it works, especially sparingly. James yes. Gordon Jr. should only be dusted off like every five or five years or so. Which is basically what they're doing. And I also kind of like the idea that one of the best new modern Batman villains doesn't have a name, doesn't yeah. have a gimmick or a costume. He's just a guy. Just a guy. Just a guy that matters to people. Yeah. That's that's cool. that's, that's all it takes. And also, you know, it's an interesting little look in the Gordon family, in the Gordon house, where it's like you tried so hard to fight crime and criminality and supervillain corruption, you couldn't stop it in your own home. Yeah. No, that's cool. Love it. There's definitely something there. Uh, <clears throat> okay. Obviously, of course, we can't talk about uh, Snyder creations without talking about the Batman who laughs, and by extension, the Dark Knights and Barbatos. Here's the thing. Barbatos, Dark Knights, they don't matter because they got superseded by Batman who laughs. Yes. Literally, he just, like a cat, he just pushed them all off the table. They don't matter. It's me, me, me. He yep. literally took over the DC universe for years. He was in fucking escapable. No, I, I love how there was like, the Red Death could have been a formidable Batman villain that mm -hmm. people would have really liked. But Batman who laughs just took over. Sucked up all the air in the room. And again, that, that first story with him is actually pretty cool and pretty fun. What if Batman fought a centibite? What if, you know, Batman fought all the worst versions of himself, you know, yeah. wrapped up in one thing? Oh, that's cool. But then they didn't stop, Sal. They kept going and that's because going. he prints money. Batman who last prints money. Until they all hated up. him. So I'm telling you, man, sales go up every single time. Every single time he appears, that sales go up. Uh, Batman Who Laughs also represents a bell you can't unring. Yep. Very you much have, so. You have ruined the Joker because you have this. Yeah. Because now the Joker isn't the scariest force in Batman's life. A Jokerized Batman is. Yes. You, If you kill the Batman Who Laughs, which I think they did twice now, yes. you have to have Joker kill him. Didn't, didn't they literally drop a sun on him at like the end of death metal and like yeah. it's gone he's done we promise yep and then williamson put the batwoman who laughs that's into, right uh, just like incarnate just which was incarnate. so funny i was like bravo Do, don't they all make fun of her too like no yes. nope we're done with you no yes. more <laughs> yes and i'm like yes that's great go uh, away please yeah the batman who laughs is a character that just i i get it i get why you couldn't not do it and I'm and I'm sorry it came to you. I'm sorry it was it was like it's like inventing the atom bomb. Yes, really. Uh, I have become <laughs> Death, destroyer, destroyer of worlds. Of worlds. <laughs> and he looked upon his kingdom and he wept. Yeah, <laughs> there were no more worlds to conquer. Kirk Peck, does do you think it's harder to make an original Batman villain because he has now he has powers and they can't make him too powerful like most of heroes villains? Nah, nah. You can give Batman all kinds of villains, and as long as like as long as they aren't. It doesn't really matter. And Batman they regularly do. do. Yeah, that's true. Most of them do. Uh, but yeah, so Batman who laughs and all the Dark Knights for that matter. But none of them do anything. You never, it's like Devastator Batman comes back. Yeah. You know, it's a shame because there's something there. Like you could do something with any of them, it's, it's especially the Speed Metal Batman. Yes, who everyone really likes. It's funny too because like Batman who laughs was like the Darth Vader to Barbados and Perpetua, and he overthrew both of them because he just could not help but climb to the top over everyone else. I can, I guarantee you, that was not how that how Death Metal ended originally. I guarantee you, they were like the the powers that he were like make Batman who laughs the main bad guy needs to be to change it because nobody because Perpetua. <laughs> Uh, unwritten unwritten completely now thanks to everything williamson is writing they i love that she's not even like the, there's that like the black the hand big of, hand of all the crisis villains like i'd no rather perfect. use cosmic odyssey yeah than yeah, Perpetua. I'd, yeah i'd rather use extant <laughs> and so would i extant got so much fucking play i couldn't believe it although it is funny you know when it's like look upon my dark army for the dark crisis i'm like eh, no women didn't invite any women to the villain team, guys. None, none at all. You couldn't think of any. Name a super powerful female f character besides Perpetua that could that, that is on the same level as Darkseid. You can't. 
I mean, like that's a sh- that's a that's a that's a failing on DC's part. I, I I didn't know being a crisis villain was such a sausage fest, but apparently it is. Evidently, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh. Well, sounds like uh, oh, except for the except for Perpetua, which sucks. That's the one. Yeah. And all the right. Design do, sucks. Do uh do we want to hop over to the tie in years now Gotta. as we get all caught up? Okay, Gotta. so. Uh, Tynan, again, technically had two Batman runs, his detective comics run before eventually taking over uh, Batman. Yep. And the beginning of his detective run was actually filled with new original villains. There was, was? A, there was the colony, that Batman-inspired paramilitary group led right. by Jacob Kane, which was an interesting premise. Oh, we're making Jacob Kane a bad guy now? Okay. Sure. Yeah, that, made, that, that was a cool idea. Or at the very least, it was a neat visual. I, I dug that as well. They, they were ultimately more misguided than evil because they were trying to stop a League of Shadows sleeper cell in Gotham. Yep. And then the general kind of subsumes Jacob himself, which also, wow, way to bring back the general, an old <laughs> Tim Drake villain. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's make it all because Tynan him. and Williamson like remember and like Tim Drake. So, And I think Batman like forgave Jacob in the end because yeah. that was just, it's like, ah, you know, it, it happens. <laughs> you know, we, we all think we can do a better job than Batman once in a while and try well, and take over gotta. the city. Yeah. yeah. No, no hard feelings, man. You still coming to Christmas dinner this year, right? <laughs> I mean, we're family. What's one takeover between family, right? Uh, it happens all the time. Uh, then after that, there was, of course, the Victim Syndicate, which yeah. got a lot of play and a lot of promotion. Cool designs, all of them, because it's an evil team, because Detective Comics was a team book at that time. So you right. needed someone to fight everyone. Solid premise people who were disfigured and otherwise hurt by superhero and especially bat family fights yeah their leader the first victim who might i say had the centibite look way before batman who laughs yeah yeah <clears throat> there's a couple of uh crossovers but that's straight up batman who laughs his outfit sure is they also make a big deal about who the first victim is like oh you'll never know my identity is a mystery only happened in one story they never went back to them we have no fucking clue who the first Which, victim is good you know what don't tell us until like someone's got a better idea i'm fine <laughs> with that too sometimes mysteries are better sometimes learning too much about a villain is bad exactly exactly uh after that of course uh some more time in villains gunsmith yeah. It was his big attempt at making an assassin for his big Assassin's Ball uh, series with Deathstroke and all the other ones. <sighs> yeah, Gunsmith. It just looks like the comedian. He lives American flags and guns. Yeah, I don't I don't care for the Gunsmith, but I, I remember when they were introduced and I was like, nope. He, he was meant to be a throwaway. But actually, no, there was him and then there was a teeth guy. He invented two <laughs> new assassins. The teeth guy <laughs> is sitting next to him. Yeah, yeah, I know, yeah. And I like the idea of inventing characters that are like jobbers that are just yeah. there to to suck. Absolutely, like, someone's got to lose. You might as well create some new fun assassins. Exactly. They did that in Batman versus Predator Two. There were like a dozen new mobster villains that they invented for no reason other than to die. Someone's got to lose to make someone else look good. It's just and the you way know what? It it's it's Gotham. They're gonna be like themed. Yep. You know, one hundred percent. Uh, after that, we get to, I guess, what ended up being the big guns of the tie in run. Yeah. Uh, the Magistrate and their CEO, Simon Saint, as well as their army of peacekeepers, but specifically Peacekeeper One, Sean Mahoney. Mm-hmm. Peacekeeper One, uh, I remember like that was that was a deal where, you know, when it was Future State, they're like, look at Peacekeeper One. Uh oh. Yeah. And it was like, isn't he cool? No. The funny thing about the magistrate and the peacekeepers yeah. is I think they actually made way better Jace Fox villains than Bruce Wayne villains. There's actually a theme there. Like There's Jace is about theme. like police brutality and, yeah. and and you know violence against people of color and Yes. You know, Batman works with the police. Yeah, having him fight roided up, corporately backed killer cops makes a lot of sense. And also speaks a lot to his journey as Batman, where it's like, you know, I want to be a Batman who doesn't kill and hold up these ideals. But if I follow the justice system and hand people over to the magistrate, they shoot first and ask questions never. So by breaking the law, by not taking them to the cops, am I not doing a better job than I would elsewise? Yeah, Batman never had any of those issues in his own story. No, it's true. Which yeah. it was just it was just Batman versus another evil CEO and another like occupying force in Gotham. And it's like, oh, that's it, huh? Yeah. 
<laughs> which is a real shame because in the lead up to that story, Tynan was playing with some interesting ideas about, you know, reparative justice and like Batman, like, oh, I'm giving Harley a second chance. I'm giving Ghostmaker a second chance because I don't want them as villains forever. I think, you know, they can be redeemed, you know. Right, right, exactly. You know, re reparative justice versus, you know, uh, punitive justice that the peacekeepers represent where they're like, no, black and white, everyone is bad forever. Shoot them all, let God sort them out. Yeah, there's something, there's something that, that's there. It's just, I don't it didn't think matter in the end because then it's like fucking scarecrow. Ooh, look at me. I'm going to take over the city and make everyone afraid again. Oh, so the same plan you have every time. <laughs> yeah. Yep, that's the one. I only do one thing. Joker War suck too. It's, it's jo again, freaking fear stance. Like, this is just Joker War again. You can't all keep taking over the city every couple months. Yep, that's it. <clears throat> I did the thing. I did the thing. <laughs> Yay. Can't really, stop me. Really quick, I couldn't, I can't, I, I I read this book and I really enjoyed the art, but like I can't for the life of me remember their name if they had one at all. Did you read The Detective? Uh, it was a uh, Tom Taylor's book with Andy Kubert where it's like, oh, yes. The white suited bat people. Oh, uh, equilibrium. Equilibrium. Thank you. I no staying that. power, nothing. No. I, I got so pissed off by the reveal about what that lady's motivation was. I'm like, that is such a dumb motivation. That was so dumb and wasn't earned. It didn't set they didn't set it up. It's just suddenly, here's the it, here's the origin. Oh it was it was dumb. And what's crazy is that there was actually a much better avenue they could have taken, but didn't because the whole idea is that you know, this lady's family dies in a car crash because Batman let the guy go. And you know, so she blames Batman, wants to kill all the people Batman saved to create a sense of equilibrium. Yeah. The guy he stops was like a gun dealer, so the idea should have been her family should have been gunned down by a guy who Batman let go because, yeah. hey, we're bringing it back to gun violence. Oh, no, we might say something if we did that. So yeah. we're going to make it like a random car crash. I'm like, fuck, you were so close to saying something. Yeah. It's also really weird. Just just a weird idea. And yeah. he, he's not a detective in that book. Anyway. <clears throat> no, not at all. Again, he does so little detective work in that book. It is astounding. Yeah, it's just just a just a weird book oh uh underbroker was another time oh, one. yeah the underbroker which again much like the dealer i'm a villain who services other villains i wear a mask but i mostly just do white collar like money crime right but i do have a look i have, I have a, a look, look because you need to in gotham and because i want to work with super villains i got to ingratiate myself to them by wearing a fly ass suit <laughs> yeah Neat idea, sadly, in the wake of all the other characters Tynan creates, overwhelmed yeah. and not accepted by the public at large. I think because they're like, it's enough. Yeah, it's like, who? Who? Like, are you kidding me? Also, the gardener got invented then, but the gardener was not a villain, as we found out. Also no. did not fight anyone, was actually there to help. <laughs> right. Another, yeah, but sold as another Batman villain. Like, a they new were like, addition hey. to the rogues gallery, who was not. Who was not. <laughs> But yeah, there was a lot of there was a lot of that in that run, wasn't it? Like, hey, I'm new and I'm bad. No, I'm not actually. Yeah, Ghostmaker. Ghostmaker, yeah, who's like only really an antagonist <laughs> for that first arc and then never again. Never again. Now he's a now he's like a member of Batman Inc. He's Probably. running Batman Inc. Apparently, we gotta read the annual to find out how that happened. Yeah, can't wait. Uh and then there's punchline. Oh yes, punchline. Punchline, uh the audience accepts her. Very much a, th basically like a minor character in Joker War that she appears in. But Tynan clearly had a lot to write and a lot to say in the backups of other stories. Yeah. To where yeah. I'm like, man, I wish this was just the story. This is good and interesting. But also not much of a Batman villain, more of a Bluebird villain who was Tynan's original hero. Yeah. Yeah. Who, who's a character that you you can't push Bluebird. The audience isn't buying it. Uh, Bluebird, whose origin is also connected to Mother, by the way. Oh, shit. So it all comes back, doesn't it, one way or another? It's all sure does. connected. Yeah, it's all connected, baby. Yeah, Punchline, um, which has gone as far as gone so far from the roots, right? The original idea, I guess, was like, Punchline, inspired by the Joker, new generation, Harley Quinn replacement. And then it's yeah, like... What, what, what if Harley wasn't sympathetic? What if Harley was always crazy and always a bad person? Right, but like, how? How do they go crazy? And it's like, you could do things like Sejic's, uh, you know, or Sejic's, uh Harleen book and like tell his story. Yeah. But with, with, with Punchline, it's she was corrupted by, you know, 
pop culture, basically. But, but but also maybe she wasn't, as they imply in the backups, that maybe she's just pretending to be that way to garner sympathy from people because, hey, people have the wrong view of her, just like people always have the wrong view of Harley. There's, there's stuff mm-hmm. there. There's stuff going on in those backups, but they're in backups. Right. So no one's reading them. Like, by and large, no I'm reading, reading them, but I'm the only one. <laughs> right. And so, like, but that's just only further making things frustrating because it's like it doesn't, because you're the only one who knows. Yeah, exactly. I, I feel like I'm the guardian of secret knowledge. <laughs> yeah. RK, which other new villains, uh, non Batman villains, would make a good matchup against Batman? I don't know, man. I can't think of many new villains in general. This is another problem and another impetus behind this episode. How many, how many new villains in general in comics came out and like stuck? Right. They, they Every year there's like a ton. And then, like, like if new Batman villains don't stick, who the hell's going to stick? Exactly. Uh, Dex Baker with a super sticker. Thank you very much, hey. Dex, for your support. And uh, yeah, like I, I feel like we're there. Is there That's the list, else? man. That's the list. Uh, let us know in the comments after this episode has aired uh, live what you think. And uh, are there any characters that we mentioned in this list that definitely should return that yes. like, deserve another chance in the sun i think that at the end of the day every character has potential every character has like an opportunity oh, uh, it just comes down to the right story at the right comes, time from the right writer exactly right creative team at the right time sometimes like a great story will come and it'll be in a legends of the dark knight book from 30 years ago and yeah. nobody read it and then that's that uh, also, did I miss anyone from the last 20 years? Because I felt pretty good in my running these down. I even surprised myself with some Yeah, character. yeah. I'm sure there are a few because like... Isn't there always? Because there's always another Batman book. That's true. There's like, God, there was like fucking five at the beginning of the new 52. Yeah, so... Oh, oh, the new version of Dollmaker, which technically he's a legacy villain because there was other Dollmakers. He doesn't count. That's true. That's true. But uh, yeah, I want to thank you so much for hanging out with us. Don't forget, of course, to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and uh, check out everything else we have here at Comic Bobs. Uh, the Derby of Derps. I feel like a failure of the Tynan Detective run was the evil future Batman who ended up being Tim Drake. Oh, yes. You mean Savior, who actually got a big push because he was the villain in that story, was supposedly tied directly to Mr. Oz, and then got to be the villain of a Teen Titans Super Sun crossover where they sent him into time and never brought him back. Good. That savior idea sucks. <laughs> I hate it. Well, you uh, don't have to deal with him anymore. Well, also, it's over. But also, wait, he's technically not new either because he was from the evil Titans of Tomorrow story by Jeff Johns. He, exactly. So he was just repurposed. He's just repurposed. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's right. So even he wasn't new. How about that? How about that? <laughs> all right, guys. I'll see you guys next time with another episode of Elseworlds Exchange. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. So long. Bye-bye. Thanks a lot.